Bonjour. Je ne vais pas parler belge. I will speak English, if you mind. And um, first of all, a great, great thanks to the organizers for this uh, great event. Uh, it's wonderful. I would like to invite you um, to make a little tour in Provence, in the south of France. I think you will agree. And we will discover this huge project that you see on the screen, which is ITER. And ITER stands for International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor. It's in Cadarache, 40 kilometers from Aix-en-Provence. And as uh, Jérôme said, I worked there for five years as head of communication. It's a wonderful project. It's very international because seven big countries and group of countries are building there the biggest, the largest fusion reactor in the world. The countries are the EU, Europe, China, Japan, Korea, India, Russia, and United States. So almost half of the population is represented there. <clears throat> we all know that we have to find new solutions for the energy that we need. And this chart shows you the use of oil in the history of mankind. In less than 200 years, we will have exhausted all the oil resources of the planet, which it took a million years to uh, generate. We don't have so many solutions, but one solution could be, suggested by scientists, to replicate what's going on in the sun and the stars on Earth. It's the fusion of hydrogen atoms. Okay, good idea, but how to do this in uh, reality? <clears throat> we all know about nuclear fission, this is used in nuclear plants in most of the countries, whereby heavy atoms like uranium, plutonium will be split by neutrons. But another process, another nuclear process is fusion. It's quite the opposite. You take light atoms like hydrogen, you heat them at very high temperature, and then they fuse, they merge, and this generates even more energy. On Earth, we have to do this in a special reactor, which is called Tokamak. It's a Russian name, because this concept has been invented 60 years ago by Russian scientists. This is the machine. It's quite impressive. Oh, sorry. <coughs> The most important part is the center. This cavity is huge, will be huge. Probably almost this room, this uh, concert room. And in this cavity, which has the form of a don donut or a wire, uh, engineers will make the vacuum. And after having generated a high vacuum, they will inject one or two grams of hydrogen, not more, so in this big room. They will eat this gas at 150 million degrees, it's huge, and nuclear atoms will fuse, and this will generate 500 megawatts during several minutes. This is the theory, this is what we expect. We are building the machine, so I cannot tell you already it's working, it's great, but if it works, then possibly we will have a new source of energy on Earth, safe, it cannot explode, and with one or two grams of hydrogen is almost nothing. Uh, it's clean, doesn't generate any uh, greenhouse gas. So it looks as perfect solution. But we are not there yet. First of all, when the seven members decided to build it there, there was a question, where? Because there are 35 
countries in the experiment. So it could be in China, it could be in the United States, in Europe, of course. <clears throat> Actually, only four sites have been proposed. One in Japan, one in France, one in Spain, and one in Canada. After three years of political discussions, quite complicated, the members finally decide in 2005 to build ITER in the south of France. Two days after the decision, President Jacques Chirac, you see on the photo, visited the site in Cadarache. And one year later, in the Elysee Palace in Paris, the seven members at the highest level signed the treaty. So green line for ITER. And the construction started. This is a photo taken in 2009. First of all, we had to make a huge platform, as you see, with a lot of devastation, forest devastation, as you can see, because on that place, it was the Provençal forest before. This platform is about 50 football grounds, so it's quite huge. Another, compli another compli complexity of the project is that the members decided to build parts of the machine. They all wanted to build parts of the machine to learn the technology and to be able maybe in the future to build themselves uh, a reactor like this. This makes, of course, things very complicated because if a, a magnet is manufactured in Japan, another one in China, other ones in Europe, at the end they should fit together and work together. Not easy. The machine is huge. This is one third, uh, only the base, of the huge fridge the cryostat, which will uh, surround the reactor. This is uh, coming from India. This gives you an idea of uh, one of the magnets that will be used in the reactor to contain the gas, the plasma, as we say. The, 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 the vacuum chamber of the reactor will be surrounded by about 30 magnets, 30 big magnets like this one. This is probably the biggest magnet in the world. This one is manufactured in Japan. It's a huge and complex project because we, you have to integrate all this system together and each system is already very complicated. This is the cooling system, the water cooling system, a total of three, uh, 34 kilometers of pipes that will surround the, uh, the cavity. And this is just to give you an idea, this is the basement level of the reactor building. There will be, there will be seven levels. Just to show you that all the room, all the space is occupied by systems. And you can imagine that if you want to modify something in one place, this will have repercussion on other systems in other places and sometimes in other buildings. And because all the manufacturing is distributed uh, among the members, voila, the slide shows you that some um, Cables for the magnets came from Japan, sent to Europe. China sent some cables to Japan. The United States sent uh, cables to Europe, and so on and so on. So if there is a small problem somewhere, it can block all the machine. Now, what happens in a tokamak when we do an experiment? You imagine you will see a gas heated at 100 million degrees. You imagine a, a burning uh, gas, something like this. It's very quiet, actually, you'll see. It's almost transparent. Uh, this is the, the tokamak 
the, the toroidal shape. It's almost transparent, but you can guess there are some instabilities on the video. And suddenly, voila, there is a big instability in the gas. It cools down and it stops. It's always the same. Another complexity is the transport because the countries are sending big components like you see on this slide. So a special road, a special itinerary has been uh, constructed by France to allow the components which will arrive in Foss-sur-Mer, close to Marseille, to take first a barge, a boat, and then 104 kilometers to uh, the other side. And some transport will use this huge platform, 352 wheels. So it blocks, of course, all the roads. It's like Tour de France. <laughs> all the departmental roads are blocked. And um, this happens during the night, of course. How much does it cost? Yes, of course, you will ask this question. Uh, we don't know. We don't know. Yeah, I don't say this to journalists because I used to say this and then in the press you see articles, oh, Uniter, come on, they are really amateurs, they don't know the price of the machine they are building. No, the reason is quite simple. We don't know and we will never know because the countries are sending the components, the magnets and so on, to ITER and they don't tell us how much debt it costs them, you see? So we can only guess. And the best guess is from the, the, the budget that the European Union, the European Commission, is putting in this project. As you see on the slide, we are now a little bit above 10 billion of euros. As Europe is funding 45% uh, of the construction, it means that the machine, I mean, this is an estimate, huh, costs 20 billion euros. It's a lot, definitely it's a lot, but it's shared by 35 countries, and you understood that if it succeeds, it may change the course of civilization. So as I say, it's a, maybe it's a, a nice gift to our children and grandchildren. We'll see. When will it start? Not tomorrow, of course. Uh, we, are, we are starting the assembly of the reactor. The first experiment, if everything goes well, is for end of 2025. Full operation 10 years later and demo the next project which will hopefully generate electricity in 2040. When I was there, my main job in terms of communication, that's what I proposed to the Director General, is to make the project as transparent, as open as possible. Easy to say, huh? After the recruitment, I had to, do, to deliver on this. Uh, first of all, it was my, my task, sorry. My task was to uh, set up information panels on the road because there was nothing around uh, Cadarache in Provence. It was almost a secret uh, work site. And transparency, openness is also on the website, on internet, of course. <coughs> And a quite big success we, we have achieved there is making a visit program. It's open to the public. I encourage the, the, you, that uh, if you go there, you can visit the site. It's really impressive, but you have to book in advance, but it's possible. This is great because and for young, for young uh, children or students, it's a nice experience to visit the site, to talk with scientists working there. So it's great, great. 